I want to welcome you all to a very special uh, program. Um, many of you already uh, know our speaker. You have also, also should all have a, a biography um, of our speaker. Uh, but as is obvious, if you just go up on the Internet, you can find out almost everything you want to know or hear many of his, uh, his talks. Uh, you can find those on the Internet um, as well. Mohammed Tahir al Qudri uh, is um, a very well known scholar, not only in Pakistan, but uh, throughout the, uh, the Muslim world and increasingly in recent years uh, in the West. He's had a very uh, distinguished career of studying both uh, law and Islamic studies, uh, was a professor and uh, head of the department at the uh, Punjab University, uh, and is the founder of Minhaj al Quran. Uh, he is a prolific author. We were just talking. Uh, he has some 450 books published uh, out of a thousand that he's finished. Uh, and so I'm hoping after this to convince him to put my name on some of those books so we can be co-authors. Since he's already written them, it sounds pretty good to me in any case. Um, but as many of you know, um, he, as it were, shot to even more international pro uh, prominence um, with a, uh, a major fatwa that he, that he gave, uh, running to something like 600 pages, uh, addressing uh, some of the key issues that we obviously face today internationally, uh, in particular um, the issue of extremism and terrorism and its relationship or lack of relationship uh, to Islam. What um, we propose to do today uh, is to have a talk and then to have a question uh, period. Uh, when it's time for questions, if you would go to the microphone and please identify yourself um, and then uh, uh, you can ask a question. Uh, questions are preferred um, to, uh, to long statements um, because uh, it's basically his party and uh, not yours. So uh, for those of you who want to uh, say something, let's try to keep it brief so that um, we can benefit as much as we can from having this dist distinguished scholar uh, and uh, religious leader uh, with us. Please. أما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم respectable audience honorable ladies and gentlemen I am really honored I feel honored and I am delighted by being with you this afternoon on invitation of a very internationally well-known, highly respected scholar, <coughs> Professor John Esposito. And uh, I'm going to say a few words on different aspects of that fatwa and some other important aspects which are directly related to that particular subject, although those subjects were basically not included in my fatwa book. Another book is coming on those subjects, but I will try to accommodate all relevant issues very, very briefly in this talk. Since I received a letter and whatever was written in that, so I found that I am supposed to address those particular issues regarding the fatwa, regarding the Kharijites ideology and its connection to present day terrorism, and regarding the concept of jihad, and particularly on the subject of juristic division or juridical division of various countries in Darul Islam and Darul Harb, abode of peace and abode of war, and confusions and misunderstandings which have emerged through this 
division because of lack of proper knowledge and appreciation of classical sciences. So to start with, I would like to issue a commencing statement and that is the basis of the edict which I issued this year condemning any kind of act of terrorism in its absoluteness without any conditionality without putting ifs and buts to its legality illegality the basis is that Islam declares killing of mankind or killing of a human being indiscriminately whether a Muslim is being killed or a non-Muslim is being killed equally gives equal weight has been legal weight has been given and it has been declared equally a sin a forbidden act and if this act of killing takes place with a particular idea with a particular ideology with a particular theology that this act of killing is lawful and permissible or I would be rewarded for that then this act of killing of mankind becomes an act of kufr, act of disbelief. It is not only to be taken as a forbidden act which is known as haram, rather it is an act of disbelief known as act of kufr. So by this act of killing, all these terroristic acts and suicide bombings, they take the person committing these kind of acts out of the ambit of Islam. It is declared in Holy Quran in Surah 5, verse number 32 Man qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafsin aw fasadin fil ard faka anna ma qatala nasa jamiya Whoever kills a person unjustly sometimes the word unjustly is misinterpreted. So they say that whatever we are, the terrorist people and extremist, radical, they say whatever they are doing that is just out of revenge. They say the wrong which is being done to us, so we are, we are doing the same out of revenge. So that is totally a wrong interpretation, a misguiding concept. According to all classical exegesis, tafasir of the Quran, without a single exception, I am talking of the classical Islamic literature which prevails on 12 to 13 centuries without a single exception. Every expert and specialist of Quranic exegesis and every Imam of Tafsir has categorically declared and it has been unanimously interpreted that by unjustly it means that except as a punishment for murder then there is a capital punishment or a punishment prescribed for spreading disorder brut act of brutality, act of violence, act of killing of mankind, act of terrorism then punishment is the capital punishment except this capital punishment given in a due course of law if anybody takes the arm on his own and kills any person, the word person has been used. Man qatala nafsan. So it has totally made it very clear, explicitly, that this verse is not related to Muslims. And it has been mentioned categorically by all tafasir, the exegetical books written on Quran. So any person is killed. So he says, it is as the murderer, the killer, he has killed all of humanity. So now, on this particular thing, this act of killing can be categorized into two kinds. A person kills someone considering it as an act of, as an unlawful act. 
illicit act. He knows this is haram, but he is doing out of his wrong temper or whatever he, he considers. Second aspect, as I already mentioned, he considered this killing halal, rather an obligatory act, an obligation on him, and he thinks this is lawful for him to kill. So by considering that act of killing lawful, by considering this act of killing lawful, this faith, this ideology, this thought and set of mind makes this act kufr. So that's why in my edict, one major question which was always asked by many Muslim scholars who have been condemning the act of terrorism, but they never went up to this extent to declare the criminals, terrorists, committing an act of kufr and going out of the ambit of Islam. They said, why it is kufr and not haram? Then I differentiated the thing. Haram is if he considers this an act of haram according to the commandment of Almighty Allah. He believes in the commandment of Almighty Allah. And instead of that fact, he kills somebody. Unlawfully, unjustly. This is a forbidden act, then he would be punishable for the whatever is recommended for him. And if he consider it lawful, it means he is rebutting the commandment of Almighty Allah through his faith. Where might Almighty Allah said, Man qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafsan. This is totally forbidden. Whatever is totally forbidden, he is declaring it lawful. So it means he is rebutting the commandment of Almighty Allah and he is making lawful what is declared by Almighty God unlawful. He is making halal what has been declared haram. So the aima of fiqh and aima of tafsir and aima of aqidah, the theology, they have unanimously decreed that if he considers this kind of uh, view, then his act becomes kufr. Now, coming to the terrorists, they are not killing the mankind, whether in Pakistan or other Muslim countries, or in Western world, in America, or in U US, in Britain, or in European countries. They are killing the mankind through suicide bombing, through their criminal activities, through their terroristic activities, and they consider their act not only halal, they consider as if it is far obligation on them. It is mandatory on them. And this will lead us to Jannah, to paradise. And we will go, we will be unable to get 70 or more than that, the virgins, and this leads us to paradise. So this is totally to make a mockery of the commandment of God and the, totally rejecting the commandment of Quran. So it, it combines two acts. One act of faith, other act of his own killing, practice, action. So he killed, it was haram. And he considered this killing is lawful or obligatory, it became kufr. So after explaining the whole thing, no need of giving many references, I just quote Imam Abu Mansur al-Maturidi. He is a great Imam of Ahlus Sunnah and Aqidah. There were two Imams, the founder of Islamic Ahlus Sunnah theology in first, third centuries. Imam Abu Lassan al Ash'ari, he came 10 to 20 years later afterwards. And Imam Abu Mansur al Maturidi, he was 